This time, the Planet Mechanics are tackling a tricky challenge down on the farm. Can they tame this fuel-guzzling monster <laughs> by turning cow muck into gas? Whoa. Or will they find themselves in much deeper doo-doo? That's a bit of an environmental disaster zone. Dick Strawbridge is an ex-army officer turned eco-warrior. Jim Stansfield is an inventor with a wild green streak. Whoa! Two men on a mission to fix the world. Whoa! One mechanical solution at a time. Oh. Together, they are the Planet Mechanics. Black air, that right, right. Dick and Jem are heading for Devon, a rural county in the southwest of England. Deepest Devonshire. They want to see if their unique brand of eco-engineering can help green up a farm. With about three quarters of Devon's area covered by farms, you'd think you couldn't get much greener. But city boy Jem is staggered by the size of the gas-guzzling machinery needed to work this land. There is not a small farm vehicle out there. They are all massive diesel engines. I you think of the city as being a, uh, where all the kind of cars are and where all the pollution is, but these things chuck out a lot of fumes. The Planet Mechanics are off to meet Andy Barnes. Like most farmers, he relies on fossil fuels. But Dick and Jem are riching to change all that. Together with Andy and his sons Mikey, Richie and Bob, they're planning to clean up the farm. Look at that, an actual steaming pile of manure. You don't get more farm than that. They will be working out of the back of this former livestock transporter. It's an old horse box, converted into a wind and solar-powered workshop. But before they can get their tools out, they need to pinpoint where Farmer Andy uses the most fossil fuel. He's got some very big toys. Hello, oh, mate. Hello there, boy. Nice oh, to meet you, mate. Really nice you? to meet you. Jim, how are you going on there, boy? Good. Oh, Always oh, wanted to come and go one of these. We'll get free, man. On his 250 acres, Andy rears 200 cattle and grows a mix of crops such as wheat and oil seed rape, which is sold and turned into animal feed and cooking oil. Andy keeps a fleet of agricultural vehicles, but his pride and joy is this massive diesel gulping combine harvester. So is this his biggest fuel user? What size engine is this? If I was to tell you he's 15 and a half litres, what's your goat. average car? One and a half's average, isn't it? Yeah, that's exactly. Well, this is 15. Andy can spend over £10,000 a year on fuel. And although the Combine is one of his thirstiest beasts, it's nothing compared to the monster he keeps in this barn. Here we go, boys. This is what you want to see. OK, what we got here? This here's me grain dryer. This is what I dries me corn with. Grain can't be stored if it's too wet. Trouble is, the average British summer means crops sometimes have to be harvested when damp. So Andy uses this massive burner to dry out his grain. It's big, but Dick and Jem certainly aren't expecting how powerful this machine is. <laughs> the grain dryer is essentially a large chamber filled with hot air. A conveyor belt moves a thick layer of grain through the chamber, and as the air passes through it, the moisture gradually evaporates but it requires a huge amount of fuel. That's burning ah. 20 gallons of diesel an hour. 20 UK gallons is about 90 litres. That's enough to dry about 10 tonnes of grain. But with harvests weighing up to 400 tonnes, the dryer can drink over a thousand pounds worth of fuel on one crop. It's a serial environmental offender. Andy knows the fossil fuel gulping grain dryer is bad for both the environment and his bank balance. But if the crops are wet, he has to use it. It's a catch-22 problem that will test Dick and Jem to the limit. 
Time for a cuppa and some hard thinking. But first, Dick and Jem need to power up their horse box. It's their Eco HQ. OK, Jem, let's get up. All yours. A fully equipped workshop on wheels. Perfect. Power for the tools comes from a wind turbine. And this solar panel is rotated to track the sun. The current is fed into a bank of batteries, and thanks to a gadget called an inverter, the boys can draw off power at mains voltage. In a matter of minutes, the mechanics are ready to get down to business. This has been a bit of an eye-opener for me. I spend my life wading through the city smog, imagining that out in the country on the farms, it's just the greenest place to be. But I've never seen so much fuel used in one place. We go around and we see all the massive machines and think, oh, I bet that drinks a few gallons. And then he opens the door to that grain <laughs> door and you're like, oh, different league. To me, that's the big issue. Andy's monster dryer burns as much fossil fuel in one 10-hour day as a family car might in a whole year. So, can Dick and Jem find a green way of firing it? On the walk around the farm, Andy showed Dick and Jem his cattle. And where there's cows, there's muck. And Andy's got loads of it. Much of this slurry will be used as fertilizer. But there's usually lots left over. And Dick spotted an innovative recycling opportunity. I like the idea of using his muck. Muck into gold. That's yeah. what we're doing. And biogas. We can do that. For his burner. For his burner. Biogas is flammable and can be extracted from manure. It consists mainly of methane and is made by bacteria that live and feed off the dung. If Dick and Jem can build something to manufacture this gas, they could burn it in the grain dryer. It would give Andy free energy from a completely renewable source. I love the idea, but what exactly would we build? We need a tank that we fill full of slurry. We have to have a way of it going in and coming out. So we just keep it topped up, right? Yeah. And then, with all of the muck actually being broken down, yeah, it's going to give off gas, and that gas we need to take down and we need to store it in a big tank. And the gas goes from there into his burner. This is going to have to be huge. Absolutely. The plan is big and bold. They want to build their very own biogas plant. They're comparatively rare in Europe, but used very effectively in many other parts of the world. They'll need two tanks, one to contain cow muck and another much larger tank to store the biogas that's manufactured. If their daring idea works, they'll finally green up that monster grain dryer. The Planet Mechanics are planning to manufacture potentially explosive gas. It seems a good idea to place the biogas plant well away from the farm buildings. Andy, if you're happy for us to put this plan into operation, where are you OK for us to site what is essentially a gas works? <laughs> we are storing a vast amount of explosive gas. Do you ever do any work on here that involves sparks, engines? I reckon we do most of that, that end of the right, place. OK. Really. Yeah, that's that, I, just, I had to check. I had to check. We, we stick it here. We, we're a long ways from anything else. Yeah. If anything goes wrong, we got, ain't got too much problem. Oh, Hopefully, Andy's right. Oh, we'll but to demonstrate what could happen if things do go wrong, Jem is setting up an experiment to simulate a gas explosion. So I'm going to put some methane in here, because that's pretty much what your biogas is. Well, that should be. And then we're going to light the flame that comes out the top of it. So as the methane comes out the top, it's going to burn. Now, as that burns, it's going to start sucking air in this little hole at the bottom. Yeah. And this is going to show where it gets horrendously dangerous. Methane, when stored on its own, is relatively safe. It's only when air gets in that the mixture could explode if lit. Surprisingly, though, there has to be around 90% air for an explosion to happen. <laughs> but this is just a small-scale demo. Dick and Jem want to manufacture thousands of times more gas than this. And if enough air mixed with such a large amount of methane, the results could be catastrophic. The normally jolly Andy is looking worried. This is no time for second thoughts. If Dick and Jem are going to green up the grain dryer, 
they need to get on with the job. They're off on a shopping trip on Dick's biofuel motorbike. Looking good, mate. Andy's got the connections. <laughs> Andy's tipped them off about a tank. They could fill this with cow slurry and use it as a digester to make biogas. As the digester, we've got holes in it, which means we can get the slurry and the muck into it, yeah? Pipe to put the slurry in, another pipe to take the gas out, and then some kind of sealed hole going in to kind of agitate the stuff while it's in there. <laughs> Farmers are natural-born recyclers. They just hate throwing things away. After all, who knows when somebody may pop by wanting to buy a rusty, leaking, rotten old muck spreader. Easy, Barnsley. <laughs> With a helping hand from Andy's neighbour, it doesn't take long to lift that long-abandoned tank. And with Andy at the wheel, it's a good idea to firmly secure that load. Good job, Jester, mate. Yeah, as so long as it's still on there by the time he gets back to the farm. Back at the farm, work can begin. Got it, Dick? <laughs> the first job on the digester is to strip down the tank and check inside for holes. Right, mate, first things first. I think we should lob this off, and then we'll be able to see what the damage is inside. Dick and Jem are delighted to get stuck into some good old-fashioned metal bashing. These eco-engineers love having a practical problem to solve, and if there's a solution that means recycling old materials, they couldn't be happier. Once they've battered the digester into submission, Jem jumps in to check the damage. Yeah, it's good. Well, almost. There is just the one hole, Dick. <laughs> Probably could do with patching this one. <laughs> The digester gets its name because the muck inside is digested by bacteria, living naturally in cow manure. Given a bit of heat and a lack of oxygen, the bacteria should happily munch through the muck, making plenty of flammable methane. Pleasant. And to make sure the digester offers a happy home for the bugs, the guys are going to install some special features. Firstly, Jem's making a muck mixing device to give the bacteria constant contact with lovely fresh turned manure. Because the blades, the way they are, you can either push it through the muck this way and the sharp end goes through and it goes through fairly easily. But if the muck's really thin and runny, then you send the bucket end in and you get much more agitation. It should work one way or work. Windows done, mate. Dick's adding extra comfort with a central heating system. Bacteria like it warm and make maximum methane at about 35 Celsius. To help out the bugs, he's connecting up a system of domestic radiators. Cheers, Mikey. Careful, careful, careful. Um, That's very, very important. I'm looking at... <laughs> is that something at my house? That radiator is what's going to be providing our heat. We're going to have to insulate the whole thing to keep it warm. And the rest of the radiator is going to be like, you know, solar panels, collecting all the sunshine. One radiator will go inside. And by painting the external ones black, they'll soak up heat from the sun and transfer it into the digester. Whoa, look at that! I think it could be a bit harder when it's full of poop. With everything ready inside, it's time to block out the oxygen and seal up the digester. Ooh, nice and solid. I, I'm going to you. Next, they need to think about storing all the biogas the bacteria will provide. They want a second container to act as a massive gas storage tank. And of course, Andy knows a man who knows a man who may have just what they're looking for. That is big. Yeah, come on. It is big and quite obviously heavy. It's just whether it is actually big enough. Mate, mate, we couldn't handle anything bigger than that. My view is we can't go too big. 
GEM wants to be sure that they can store up plenty of biogas to power the grain dryer. But this tank is a serious heavyweight and could be very hard to handle. This is as much gas as he's going to get. I think you're right, we can't handle anything bigger. I will take it, yeah. if we can afford it. This old tank weighs about two tons and has a volume of around 20 cubic meters. That's similar to a small removal van. Filling it with biogas could take up to three weeks. Trying to fill this up with gas is going to be a good challenge, yeah? Here he is. It looks bigger now, mate. It does look bigger now, right? Yeah, fair old tool, that, isn't it? Dwarfed by the tank, the team stand back and take a reality check. It's now clear that this massive chunk of metal could hold a huge amount of gas. Now, I've got a bit of a concern about it, because, you know, this is quite explosive stuff, isn't it, really? Yeah. Methane will explode on ignition if it contains enough air. So it's vital that the tank has no holes, and there's only one way to check. This wasn't how I imagined I'd start my potholing career. Mate, this is not nice. And leaks aren't the only hazard. They're horrified by the thick, glutinous oil oozing out of the tank. I mean, that's what's just dripped out while we've had it sat there overnight. It is dodgy. That's a bit of an environmental disaster zone. Right, I'm gonna go in there and see what it looks like. It's a filthy, stinking job, but somebody's got to do it. It's clear who's drawn the short straw. Dick stands well back. As Jem explores the oily chamber, Dick is poised to help out. It seems the storage tank doesn't contain any unexpected holes, and Jem thinks he can deal with the oil. You can scrape it off. Good. <laughs> I reckon we can get the worst off with that, and then we'll have to look at some sort of jet wash, pressure wash thing. <laughs> You're not taking me seriously enough now, this time. Jem's got a long, unpleasant job on his hands, scraping off the tar-like oil. But it's clearly a one-man job freeing up Dick to get on with all those other vital tasks. Definitely rather him than me. Although the tank seems leak-proof, Dick and Jem are taking no chances with their potentially explosive gas plant. They've come up with an additional safety feature. These look brilliant, mate. Look at this. They're proposing to build a massive water safety bath using some old metal panels. This will allow them to completely submerge the gas storage tank. It's good to me. Yeah, that'll take a curve. Can we see that, can we? It was busy enough. They'll place the gas storage tank in a water bath, and by filling it up to the top, the water will push out all the air. Biogas produced in the digester will then bubble into the storage tank and gradually push out the water. Because no more air can make its way in, the risk of explosion is minimized. So the middle of the tank's in the middle of the hard? Yep. Dick and Jem start marking out the shape of the water bath. They don't yep. want it any bigger than necessary because the sheer weight of all that water could crack the concrete floor. But it does have to be large enough to fully submerge the storage tank. So Andy enlists some extra help. His teenage sons are no strangers to hard work. They're well used to helping run the farm and are happy to get their hands dirty. With three panels in position, the water bath is soon taking shape. Yeah, don't you? <laughs> Late afternoon. As the rain pours down, the bath slowly goes up. Stick on that and bolt in. This looks spot on. And you say it doesn't leak? I hope not. 
got a fiver on it. He's got a, he's got a tenner on it. Yeah, he's got a fiver for each of us. To help make sure the water bath doesn't leak at the bottom, they seal it with a layer of concrete. Boys, we've got to get this down as quick as we can, otherwise we'll be swimming in it. Next, they start some metal braces to strengthen the sides. Any adjustments? By the end of the day, Project Biogas is looking well underway. But there are some very dark clouds on the horizon. In the cold light of day, Dick and Jem now have doubts about the strength of the bath. It's not going to keep that shape, and it's going to crack the concrete at the bottom, and, then we're gonna and the water's going to go. They went for a rectangular bath to minimise the water needed to fill it. The drawback is that it requires major strengthening to cope with the intense pressure on the sides. And they've just found out Andy doesn't have enough heavy-duty steel. We can make it strong enough if we build it heavy enough, but, like, I don't think we've got the bits here to actually do it. Whichever way we do it now, we've got to have a round tank. They initially ruled out a round bath because despite its inherent strength, the vast amount of water needed to fill it could crack the concrete floor. But if they now want a round bath, there's just one drastic solution. They're going to have to cut their storage tank in two and place one half upside down in a smaller round bath. The gas will bubble in at the bottom, causing the inner tank to float up. This will reduce the amount of gas they can store, but it's their only option, given the time and materials available. Can I borrow your cup a sec? There's our tank, and then in a matter of hours, get rid of one half, keep the other half, put it into this, make this round, and then as the gas comes in, it creeps up, and then the gas goes out, it goes back down again. It's a setback, but there's no time to waste. The planet mechanics pick up the pace and get on with plan B. A nudge from Andy's digger, and the job is done. Thank you, Mr. Barnes. Well done. That's a proper job. They dismantled the large bath, and a smaller round one is snapped together. The structural problems have been easily corrected. But Dick and Jem know the change of plan has dealt the project a major blow. We wanted to make a gas storage tank that could power Andy's burner. Yeah. We ended up having to compromise on just getting the biggest one that we felt we could handle. Now we've got to cut that tank in half. I don't know if we've got a prayer of powering that grain drive. The inconvenient truth is that the grain dryer consumes huge amounts of fuel. But now they've only got half a storage tank, and Dick and Jem know they won't have enough gas to fire it for a useful amount of time. But the planet mechanics refuse to give up. They're determined to leave Andy with a truly workable alternative to fossil fuels. So, is there anything else on the farm they can use to fuel the grain dryer? We need to burn something, and it has to be convenient and easy. And the answer might be growing right under their noses. Andy's oil seed rape. This crop is known for its yellow flower, but it's the tiny black seeds that are useful. Farmers grow it to be crushed and turned into cooking oil. On here, it says oil burner. I was wondering, he's got that crop of rapeseed. Yeah, he's got a lot of it. I know you can squeeze oil out of rapeseed. So he just squeezed the oil out of rapeseed <laughs> and just feed it straight in there. Yeah, okay, well, I think the idea is to make their very own rapeseed oil here on the farm. It would be a sustainable and locally sourced way to fuel the grain dryer. So Jem is using this workshop press to see how easy it is to squeeze the oil out. Right, mate, how are we doing? All right, I just thought I'd do a quick experiment to see what it's like to uh, press it out with hydraulics. Jem switches on the press. Ooh, that's like pure rapeseed oil. 
extra virgin, first pressed. The oil looks good, but there is one issue. How much do you think we've got there, Dick? You teaspoonful. Are, you are joking. That's not a teaspoonful. OK, like half a teaspoonful. It's clearly not enough oil. They need to get hold of an industrial press. Most are capable of making a litre of oil from every three kilos of seed. That means Andy's crop could run the dryer for about 30 days. Dick and Jem have found a viable, clean fuel for the grain dryer. But going down the rapeseed route leaves them with a half-built biogas plant, unless they can come up with a new use for the gas. The Planet Mechanics' quest for a green way to power Andy Barnes's grain dryer is at a turning point. With the biogas idea on hold, Dick is searching for an industrial press to make rapeseed oil. Look, it's, a, it's an oil press, so, and it's continuous feed. That's 10 litres an hour, so it's taking about a third of its yield. That's very good. Compared to us. <laughs> the press looks ideal, but it runs off a large electric motor which means using up more fossil fuels. But Jem's had an idea. If it can drive off an electric motor, it can drive off a petrol engine. I don't see why not. I know you can run petrol engines on propane because the conversion kits cost very little money indeed. If we can run it on propane, there's every chance you can run it on methane. And what have we just been making out there? That would be a really neat solution to using our gas yeah. effectively. The idea is to power the rapeseed press using an engine, which they'll convert to run on biogas. I think we've found a way of turning cow muck into oil, and uh, <laughs> to be honest, that sounds like the holy grail to me, because we convert the cow dung into methane, the methane goes into the former petrol engine that drives the press that squeezes out the oil, it's the whole lot. I think that's amazing. Gem's Eureka moment is brilliant news for the project. They now have a complete system that will power the grain dry using resources from the farm. The grand plan will consist of four stages. First, biogas will be produced from cow manure in the digester. The gas will then be collected in a water-filled storage tank. Next, the gas will be piped into an engine converted to run on methane and attached to the rapeseed press. Finally, oil is generated, which in turn fuels the grain dryer. As simple as that. The Planet Mechanics are on a roll. Now they're determined to convince Andy that eco-fuels are a usable option for farmers. Andy, this is agricultural red diesel, fossil fuel you know and love it, right? That's, that's the stuff we put in the tractors. And look at this. This is biodiesel. It's made from vegetable oil. Have a smell of that. It's, it's got nearly it's almost, the same properties. Yeah, yeah. yeah it sort of smells similar, doesn't it? Yeah. We've got to prove to you that this is as good as that. And I've got a suitably agricultural test in mind this way. <laughs> to show that fuels made from crops have plenty of grunt, they've set up a tug of war between two equally matched tractors and two reasonably matched drivers. Keep on. OK, hold it there, hold it there, hold it there. That's perfect. Go! Dick's tractor is fueled with biodiesel. Andy is running on fossil diesel. As experiments go, it's not the most scientific, but it certainly shows biofuels can stand their ground against fossil fuels. Yes! Andy Barnes! Hey! <laughs> <laughs> that, was that was an amazing performance. <laughs> what do you reckon, Andy? There's nothing in it. I mean, point proven, I think. Got to be. That's That's right. Absolutely, it's that close. Biofuels. Nothing in it. <laughs> Back to business. The rapeseed press Dick found on the web has arrived. You've saved the day with this one. There is no way I would have been able to make one of these from Andy's farm scrap. We can just continually feed in rape. The screw thread means that we're going to be pushing the rape all the way through. Oil comes out at one side, the cake that comes out here, Andy can feed to his cattle, yeah? And all we have to do is drive it. 
To drive the press, they're salvaging this scrap lawnmower and will convert its petrol engine to run on biogas. It's surprisingly simple to make a petrol engine run on gases like methane. Normally, an engine needs both petrol and air. It combines them inside the cylinders where a mini explosion creates the movement. However, if the petrol is disconnected, it can be replaced with methane by adding the gas directly with the air. The engine requires no modification. The only requirement is the correct pressure on the gas. A bit of tinkering later and they're ready to test the mower using methane from a canister. Let's get a start on petrol and let's squirt some methane and see what happens. That should then just mix with the air to create an explosive mixture that makes the pistons go up and down and we shouldn't need the petrol at all. So get the methane okay. ready, get the methane ready, let's get it started and then just turn off the petrol. The plan is to start up the mower, then pump methane directly into the engine. If it keeps going when they disconnect the petrol, it's a success. Here we go, we've got pressure. It works. The lawnmower runs on methane, which means it should run on biogas. Absolutely marvellous, <laughs> isn't it? Ripping Listen, job! We've got natural power. Yeah. OK, now we have to use it. Andy moves in to attach the lawnmower to the rapeseed press. You ready for this, mate? Yeah, ready. Get set. They're using a system of belts and pulleys to make the connection. With everything joined together, it's time to start up and try out the press. That's totally running on gas, no petrol. So see if you can take the load. You're ready? There we go, I'm ready. The press is working, but does it make oil? Here we go! That's oil! <laughs> That's so brilliant! That's okay. amazing! So methane, make it all work, and we got oil! OK, oh. more! Right. It's a fantastic result. They can make an alternative fuel for the grain dryer. A key part of the project is in place. Now they must finish constructing the plant that will produce biogas to power the press. The gas plant will consist of a digester that will contain cow manure and generate methane gas. The gas will be collected in a storage tank, upturned in a bath of water. The digester is pretty much finished, but there is still lots to do on the storage tank. Right, our half a tank gas holding swimming pool. I'll get the bitumen in it, yeah, uh, it's because that way we waterproof this and we allow for any little bits of movement. Yeah, yeah, yeah don't skimp on the uh, coat thickness. I'm going to use that whole 25 litres in here. With a coat of sealant for the water bath and a guide system to keep the storage tank upright, it's time to put it all together. The first step is to set the storage tank in position. Even though it's been cut in half, it's still an impressive sight. There's not many people who got one of those in their garden. The upturned tank needs to be positioned exactly in the centre of the water bath. So come about here, Richie. Not yet, no. no. Right, how are we on the uh, measuring sticks? Oh, that's perfect. You're 89 and you are 93. I think we'll live with that. Andy, spot on. It's within 5 mil all the way round. Perfect. As the dust settles, Andy can now see just how much gas will be on his doorstep. I've got oxyacetylene bottles there that I weld with. And they're like this big. 
and that will create a horrendous amount of flame and gas. And we had got something... I'll tell you the truth, I think I need to check my insurance policy. Next, the water bath has to be built up high enough for the internal tank to be fully submerged. Right, okay, into you further. I'm doing. just going to see if I can get something in there so we don't lose it. Oh, oh like that. There we go. Right. With everything secure, the storage tank is ready to be filled with water. I ain't gonna promise whether that's gonna leak or not. It's a tank we're worried about. Close another tunnel. Right, <laughs> Let's get some water in right. here. Right. As the water floods in, there's two things on everyone's minds. Will the storage tank float up? And more importantly, is that bath watertight? Oh look, you got a leak there! I'll cut you a tenner. <laughs> Just practicing, Andy. There's nothing there. Oh, Just nice. practicing. But then. Andy spots this. Oh dear! It's a small leak caused by the force of the incoming water. It's not at the bottom of the tank and can be easily fixed. That's trivial. To be right, fair, that, that's, 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 that's not that's classic leak. I'm more interested in the bottom. We can fix it, Andy. <laughs> As more water goes in, they're waiting to see if it will float. That sounds like the tank's moving. We should be over there watching it. Yeah, come on. If we've actually heard that noise, which must have been the tank moving, yeah, that means there's enough water to start it floating, yeah. which means we seem to be doing quite well on the bottom, don't we? The bottom does look good, and that is probably the biggest issue. A little later, and the water's in. The inner storage tank has floated up because it still has some air left in it. Dick, if I let the air out, do you want to check what kind of pressure we're getting? Go for it, mate. All right. <laughs> nice. It's good. Dick, that is brilliant news. The release of air shows the storage tank gives plenty of pressure. It's the big moment. Jem's ready to feed that digester a big helping of muck. Come on, Anthony, go, mate. Do not turn this on until I'm ready. <laughs> There's some jokes that I just don't laugh at. You say that? I smell that slurry quite close up. Right, that's quite a long way down the inlet pipe. Are you ready for the slurry? Fire up the poo tube. You ready? Hundreds of litres of somewhat watery slurry enter the digester. While the gas is being made, small amounts of extra manure will need adding to make sure that there's fresh food for the bacteria. Dick uses a dipstick to measure the correct depth inside. It's filling quite quickly! But it's half full! We add the culture! The culture is a concentrated dose of the special bacteria needed to make biogas. Here comes the culture! You can see it's reacting already in those things. <laughs> Better culture and do me some good. The manure already contains the required bacteria naturally, but this is like hey, a booster charge that will kickstart the digester into producing gas. It's a weird black-green colour. I didn't know what to expect. Oh, no, I don't want it spraying on me. No, just think what that bacteria's going to do for us, yeah? I know, these are our friends. Yeah, they are. Get it all in. Don't waste any. All the lumps, mate. All right. Great, time for more slurry. All right, ease it in gently. That's us, we're filled. <laughs> that wasn't supposed to happen. Apart from a bit of mopping up, Project Biogas is complete. The digester now has to be left for about a month for the biogas to form and fill the gas tank. What's it like to be the proud owners of a biogas plant, eh? Absolutely super <laughs> job, isn't it, eh? It's all up and functioning. It's full of slurry, you've got the bacteria in there, and it's nice and warm. The radiator's producing heat, which is helping it all turn over. But at the moment, we're just short of turning the tap on, and then gas can come out of this and go that way. When 
we come back in a month's time, that's going to have risen right up so it's stuffed full of methane. And the methane can be tapped off on that pipe. And out of here, it comes. You can then pop that into your engine. The engine boom, fires up the press. The press then starts squeezing the oil out of the rapeseed. And you've pretty much got your fuel for your grain dryer. Absolutely. Good 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 boys. Thank you. All that remains is to open the valve, which will allow the gas to move from the digester into the storage tank. Wait for it. Wait for it. Go. Yeah. <laughs> When we come back in four weeks, this is going to be awesome. Be Thank good. Thank you very much. Cheers. Bye-bye. There we are, boys. All we've got to do now is stand back and wait for him to rise. <laughs> a few weeks later, Dick and Gemma are back and can't wait to see how much the gas tank has risen. Oh, yeah. That's what we like to see. There's oh, definitely you... gas in there. Do you know something? That proves the whole system works. Yeah. Look, lovely sunshine, gas being made. I'm impressed by that. I've got to go and see what's going on up there. <laughs> there's, there's a good amount of gas. He's done a lot of work, mate. Oh, there's got to be at least half a tank full in there. I think that's ace. <laughs> that's amazing, though, that yeah. we have turned that waste slurry into something potentially really useful. Andy. We got gas! You have. We've moved the tank over there so as you get more sunlight. Yeah. Because yeah. the heat on the tank's warming the gas, and that's very important. Yeah. 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 The hotter yeah. the weather is, the more gas he rises. Do you know what the gas is? Have you checked it I haven't yet? got a clue. You haven't? No, I'm checking Look, gas. We don't know if it's flammable yet, then. No, it could be a lot of hot air. We've yeah. got to do some kind of flammability test. So, will the Planet Mechanics biogas actually burn? Never one for half measures, Gems rigged up a surefire way of checking that the biogas is flammable. Brilliant. So we've got a homemade flamethrower, and the idea is when we crack open the valve, our flammable gas, hopefully flammable gas, comes whistling down the pipes, out the end here. They're a safe distance from the gas tank, and they're using a special water trap to stop gas burning back along the pipe. Dick switches on. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> it's burning! Oh, you can feel the heat. It's fantastic news. The flame is transparent and burns with hardly any smoke, Ooh. suggesting this gas is high quality. Oh, look at that! Check it. That's good gas. It is. That's impressive. It's burning really clean. The next step is connecting the biogas to their lawnmower-driven rapeseed press. But before that, to ensure everything's working properly, they start up the old lawnmower engine using the methane from the canister. A test batch of rapeseed is poured in. And out comes the oil. I want to do some cooking with it. Jem likes to taste it. I do, I love it. Great. So the last remaining link in their no fossil fuels chain is going to be making the oil using biogas. Right, so now we've got biogas coming all the way through to this point. They start up the mower and get ready to switch over to biogas. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. I just felt like it was running on it. It did seem for a sec. A teasing glimpse of success, but the lawnmower engine just won't stay running. They think there's not enough gas getting through. We want more pressure. Yeah, we've got lots of bales. If we throw something up there, nice and heavy pushing down, we've got a chance of increasing it. We should be able to get more fuel into that, and it might, it might bite, it might take it. By pushing down on the storage tank, they will force more gas out and increase the pressure. And after giving the engine parts a good cleaning, they've done everything they realistically can to make the lawnmower run on biogas. Gas on. <laughs> they've got plenty of pressure. The biogas seems to be a quality product, but the old scrap lawnmower just won't take it. Doesn't work. It's 
one bit of recycling too far, Dick. It was great finding junk, but that's not going to work for us, is it? No. The engine's just too old and too tired. The reclaimed engine has developed a major fault, and there's nothing on the farm to replace it. And now, it won't even start up on petrol. The fact that this engine will barely start on petrol, I'm not that surprised that it struggles with anything less. I really am not. In spite of their obvious disappointment, the lads know the idea behind the project is sound. They've made oil using bottled methane and think that with a better engine, they could do it with biogas. I think what we do is show to Andy, Andy, look, you get a slightly better engine and you can run this off the biogas and we can still run his burner off the oil from his rape. Be cool. Be cool. Yep. Fortunately, they still have the oil they made earlier. So it's time for the ultimate test. Will that oil fire up the grain dryer? Here we go, Andy Barnes Eco Oil. Oh, ripping! Pressed out of your rapeseed. This is the ah, shortcut. Look at that. That's straight out the press. Yeah, That's straight out the press. I don't see no reason why that won't work, do you? <laughs> Better. There we go. That's the lock. Well, let's go firing up that boys. Come on, up we go. The first eco-powered grain dryer. Are you ready for this? Ready. It's the moment of truth. Will the biofuel made from Andy's rapeseed fire up his grain dryer? <laughs> Success. It's an amazing achievement to run this fuel guzzler on a sustainable alternative. At the moment, fossil fuels still win on price. But with their cost ever spiralling, this new way could soon make perfect sense. As for the biogas plant, until Andy can get hold of a better engine, they've probably got Britain's only cow manure powered barbecue. I tell you what, we cook breakfast down here every morning, Mick. Not quite the right size for the grain dryer. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. We're cooking on cow muck. I never thought I'd be happy to do that. It doesn't smell at all. We've got cow muck turned into gas, and it's working well. And we've used rapeseed to run the grain dryer. How much better? Good work. Cheers, oh, mate. We could have done that, yeah. It's been, oh, been a pleasure, Richie. Oh, thank you. Thank You're you. a star, mate. You're a star. Keep working on that side step, right. though, are you? Are they ready yet? <laughs> exactly. It does clean your hands nicely, that oil. It's a beauty product. It's 